And uh, thank you to all of you uh, for attending this session. I know there's a, a great uh, variety, a smorgasbord of uh, sessions to choose from, and we appreciate you uh, uh, giving us your, your time. Um, my topic today is public services and, uh, and trade rules, specifically trade and services rules, and, and um, means to preserve policy space uh, for innovation. Now, less than two decades ago, uh, services fell largely outside the scope of international trade treaties. And that situation uh, changed dramatically in the mid-1990s uh, with the creation of the WTO and the GATS, the General Agreement on Trade and Services, and the negotiation of the NAFTA, uh, which has been followed by many other regional and bilateral uh, trade agreements with varying levels of, of trade and services commitments and, and obligations. Now these agreements have tended to redefine services in terms of their potential for commercialization by global firms and, and international service providers. Now from the beginning uh, there was an inherent tension between the rules governing uh, trade and services which, which promote commercialization and public services, which strive to meet basic social needs affordably, universally, on a not-for-profit basis, and usually accompanied by regulation that deliberately limits commercialization and chooses not to treat basic services as pure commodities. With a few exceptions, uh, trade treaties have been, have not, in my view anyway, been the direct cause of, of privatization. I, I would say that rather their, the impacts on public services have been structural. So the, the first impact is, is to fix the boundaries of public services by raising the costs of expanding them or creating new ones. The NAFTA's investment chapter and the GATS both codify in, in different ways the regressive concept that foreign commercial service exporters and investors must, must be compensated when new public services are created or existing ones are expanded. While governments retain the formal right to expand public services, the treaties make doing so far more difficult and expensive. Now, a second impact is to increase the bargaining leverage of private economic interests specifically foreign investors and commercial service providers, when new public services are proposed or implemented. From my own country, there's the example of public auto insurance. We have public auto insurance, uh, very uh, good, workable, affordable systems in, in four of the uh, ten Canadian provinces. Uh, and we have protected our ability to maintain those systems uh, under the General Agreement on Trade and Service trade and services, but when uh, two additional provinces uh, after elections fought on that issue, uh, elected governments that were prepared to implement those systems, uh, the insurance industry was able to threaten uh, um, action under both the WTO and under NAFTA's investor state dispute settlement uh, system. and and. Uh, for that reason and other reasons, the, the reforms never proceeded in, in either province. <laughs> now, a third impact is to lock in future privatization by making it difficult for future elected governments to change course and reverse past pri privatizations, even failed ones. And this, of course, is the, the ratchet effect. Now, there is a carve-out for public services, as probably uh, all of you know, in, in the GATS. Now, the GATS excludes entirely from the agreement services provided in the exercise of governmental authority. If it had been left for governments to define for themselves what services they considered to be in the exercise of governmental authority, then Article 1.3 could have been a broad exclusion that preserved government's flexibility to protect public services. But unfortunately, as uh, you see the qualification uh, on, 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 the, on the screen, uh, the 
services are defined as any service which is supplied neither on a commercial basis nor in competition with one or more service suppliers. And in, in many people's views, this is defined so narrowly that it provides little or perhaps no effective protection for public services. At the top, you'll see a quote from the then uh, Director General of the, of the WTO, Mike Moore. Uh, in the heat of debate in the early uh, part of the century uh, on the GATS, it was just after the, the failure of the MAI and the GATS 2000 negotiations were beginning to attract attention. Um, now, the reason that that quote is misleading or overstated is that most public service systems involve a tightly regulated mix of public, not-for-profit, and private financing and delivery. To be effective, a GATS exclusion for these services needs to safeguard government's ability to deliver public services through the mix that they deem appropriate and to shift this mix as required and to closely regulate all aspects of these mix, mixed systems to ensure that base, the basic needs of their citizens are met. The GATS exclusion clearly falls well short of this ideal, although by how far remains uncertain until we have a, a, a binding interpretation. Now, unfortunately, the second quote, which is from a recent uh, European Commission Reflections paper uh, in the context of the Canada-EU Comprehensive Economic and trade agreement negotiations, I think is probably a uh, closer, uh, a more accurate appraisal. Um, in, in, in the Commission's view in this paper, only core government functions, police, judiciary, prisons, statutory social security schemes, border security, air traffic control, which are currently of no commercial interest would fall clearly within the scope of the governmental authority exclusion. And even this can vary by country. So in a sense, it's only when there is commercial interest in or competition with public services that governments need to invoke an exclusion. In other words, when the governmental ex authority exclusion is most needed, it is least effective. Now, other speakers will uh, talk about the GATS and, and trade and services rules. And um, I hope emphasize the point that they extend beyond uh, simply guarantees of non-discrimination for uh, foreign services and, and uh, foreign service uh, suppliers. Uh, for example, uh, GATS Article uh, 16 prohibits public monopolies and exclusive suppliers in fully committed sectors, even on a regional, local, or municipal uh, level. And of course, this is uh, very important since many public services are, are delivered on, on that basis. The same article also does not permit restrictions on the legal form of service providers in fully committed sectors, such as favoring community-based not-for-profits which are so important in social services, such as uh, child care and education. And as other speakers may uh, uh, discuss, but I, I won't today, the GATS also develops templates for pro-competitive regulation tailored to, to uh, certain sectors, such as telecoms. Now, since the GATS governmental authority provision does not adequately uh, carve out public services, governments must rely on other means to insulate public services from the commercializing pressures of the agreement. One course of action is to make no commitments in a sector. And, and of course, that's been Canada's approach for health, uh, social services, and, and education under the GATS. Uh, one of the, another approach, uh, horizontal lim limitation, one of the most well-known examples is the EU's uh, public utilities exemption which reads that services considered public utilities at a national or local level may be subject to public monopolies or to exclusive rights granted to private operators. It is also possible uh, to withdraw commitments, but compensation must then be negotiated 
with other uh, member governments under the GATS Article 21. And to say a few words about the TISA, the Trade and International Services Agreement. So the already formidable challenges in safeguarding uh, public services under the GATS are now being exacerbated by the negotiations towards the TISA. It is unclear, to me anyway, whether or how the TISA will eventually be integrated into the WTO system. That's, yeah, how, how or whether. Um, it is a self-selected group of only, the most, uh, only those most committed to, to deeper services liberalization. So the countervailing argue, arguments are, uh, by that very, the countervailing arguments to protect sensitive sectors are, are by that uh, standard uh, less vocal. Uh, the, the talks are, are characterized by a high level of secrecy. Uh, the, the proposed negative list approach to national treatment uh, commitments, that's the list it or lose it approach, increases risks to, to public services. Quite simply, it's easier to make a mistake in a negative list approach. Um, deeper commitments, and you know, to qualify under GATS Article 5, we might be talking as high as 90% uh, coverage, undermine the utility of Article 21, the ability to withdraw commitments, because you need what negotiators call water in your schedule in order to uh, be able to compensate uh, for uh, the withdrawal of those commitments. Probably one of the most uh, threatening aspects is the, the commitment by, I think, many TISA parties to uh, stand still and ratchet. TISA's uh, standstill provision would, would, would freeze existing levels, levels of liberalization, perhaps across the board, and its ratchet would explicitly lock in future uh, liberalization. And these are per type, precisely the types of provisions that must be avoided if public services are to be safeguarded. I'm just going to briefly uh, identify, uh, in the interest of time, some of these additional TISA elements, uh, which are under discussion, as I said, be under a veil of secrecy, but uh, all of them uh, potentially quite controversial. The issue of government procurement is on the list, and, and uh, I'll be honest, I don't understand why uh, the members of the TISA group cannot use the government procurement agreement uh, to make commitments among themselves. You know, unless the plan is to somehow stack the deck against developing countries who are not part of the TISA group at this point. Uh, the whole issue of subsidies and countervailing actions is, is uh, quite fraught. Uh, when we talk about domestic regulation, we are explicit, disciplines on domestic regulation, we are explicitly talking about disciplining non-discriminatory regulation governing services. Again, a very sensitive area as are cross-border information flows and, and the whole issue of state-owned state enterprises. Uh, to conclude, uh, regrettably, trade treaties have, in effect, redefined public services as exceptions to be justified rather than norms to be emulated. Yet affordable, high-quality public services are one of the goals of economic development to which international trade is but a means. True innovation requires preserving the ability of governments to restore, revitalize, or expand public services. Public service systems are dynamic and flexible, and safeguards for public services in trade treaties must support this dynamism and innovation, not lock in liberalization or make privatization or deregulation experiments irreversible. Today, nearly 20 years after the creation of the GATS, NAFTA, and the subsequent prolifer proliferation of trade and services agreements, there is still a clear need for structural changes that provide comprehensive protection for public services. 
And unfortunately, what seems to be the hottest game in town, or in this town, uh, the TISA appears to be moving us in the wrong direction. Thank you.